Rangers here in Salt Lake City give us two interesting second round matchups. Starting in the West region this afternoon with the number one seed, UNLV, and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. A matchup of the Big West and the Big Ten to see who moves on to the Sweet 16. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim Brand, along with Len Elmore and Lenny. Everybody knows about UNLV. Many picked them to be among the Final Four. But Ohio State, certainly one of the youngest teams in the tournament. Can they play with UNLV? Well, chronologically, they're young, but their tough Big Ten schedule. This is a team without seniors. Their tough Big Ten schedule is something that happened the other night. It allowed them, really, to play close game situations. And the close game situations is something that has matured them and made them capable of playing today. All right, let us update you on a developing story now with the running reps. Greg Anthony, the junior guard who had that fractured jaw was injured in practice yesterday and sat out. This was the injury against Fresno State when he hit his face against the floor. Again, I tell you, yesterday in practice, he was injured again, sat out most of that practice. Well, a lot of things are said about these UNLV players, but nobody talks about their heart. It's un understandable that a guy like Greg Anthony was wants to lift his team. He's played every game since that injury. His jaw is wide. He will play. We understand he's suffering with migraine headaches. We'll have the starting lineups when we come back. CBS Capital, well below the Wasatch Mountains. And it's easy to see why Brigham Young said this is the place. We're in the John Huntsman Center here. And the starting lineups. Jim Jackson is the guy to watch number 22. He's the freshman. He's the rookie of the year out of that conference. Along with Jen Carter, Brown, and Baker. We told you about Johnson. There's Augman, Butler, Hunt, and Anthony, the starters for UNLV. The officials today, Mike Crowley from Philadelphia, PA, John Moreau from Richmond, and John Koskinen from Long Island. The University of Connecticut has already advanced by beating California 74-54 in the East. That game played in Hartford. So now we're down to the final 31 teams trying to advance to the Sweet 16. Running Rebs in white. Ohio State and red. We're underway from the West region. Controlled by the Buckeyes. Well, we talked about at the open, Tim, is the fact that this is a team that's matured throughout their schedule. It'll be very important to watch the matchup with Mark Baker and Anderson Hunt guarding him here to see if Baker can withstand the pressure. Inside the Carter, around the rim, falls out, and Johnson with a big rebound. Anderson Hunt over to Anthony to work the perimeter. This is Butler up top. It's a real tough matchup inside for Chris Jen against Larry Johnson. Anthony shot it, pulled down by Carter. Both teams seem to be just a bit rushed right now, recognizing the importance of the game, a little bit of anxiety. Ohio State Buckeyes with a record of 17 and 12, the running Rebs 30 and 5, the number one seed in the West. Baker, good penetration, hesitates and can't get it to go down, but the follow by Brown is good. Well, Jamal Brown has provided a lot of leadership for their team, particularly playing the second guard position. He's a versatile guy, loves the rebound, and that's what Ohio State's going to have to do. Second shot opportunities. The Rebels are much too big. This is Butler with the turnaround, and we're tied at two. A good example of being much too big. Throwing it straight in the post. Ohio State's going to have to help out, peel back, and help out a little bit. Running Rebs scored over 100 points Thursday night. One by the Brown. It's good, and he's fouled. But Tim, Jamal Brown worked over the summer on driving to the basket, doing more things when the ball is moving rather than just standing there waiting for the outside shot. And here with a nice move down the lane, he's challenging those big guys inside for the running Rebels. Foul is on David Butler. That's his first. First team foul against UNLV. At the line is Jamal Brown. And he converts the three-point play. Tim Brandt let Elmore with him just underway at Salt Lake City. Five to Ohio State. 
State doing a nice job of fronting inside. Oh, pass inside to Johnson. But when you have a player with the caliber of a Larry Johnson, you need more than just the front. You need the help side to move over. Jet in the paint. He'll fire from there. It's long and the rebound goes to Butler. All five starters for the running Rebels average double figures. Very balanced attack. And a look at Randy Ayers, first year at Ohio State. There's the one final we talked to you about. Smith with 24 points. So they now advance to the Meadowlands in East Rutherford, New Jersey, and will await the winner of the Clemson LaSalle game. And you don't think people across this nation believe now that Connecticut's for real. There's the proof. Johnson walks. Well, when you talk about a Cinderella team, you talk about an upstart. That's not the UConn Huskies. They've got 29 wins this year. And they've got some big wins against some teams that are still in this tournament. Some of them picked to be in the Final Four, like a Georgetown and like a Syracuse. Inside they go, and Carter hits it. 7-4 Buckeyes. Down the other end, Altman answers. Well, that's the first time in three possessions that Vegas has been able to come down court in transition. That's something Ohio State's done a good job of prior to that, getting back and not allowing them those breakaways or those easy buckets in transition. Nice pass to Brown. Can't get the roll. Fight for the rebound. Ohio State comes down with it. Second shot opportunities again. And Bears repeating. Ohio State's going to need a lot of them. Nice pass inside to Baker. 9-6 Ohio State. But here's Hunt at the other end. And he's fouled by Mark Baker. Tim Branton led Elmore with USB. John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. The West Region second round. First game of the afternoon here. The number one seed, UNLV. And Ohio State. The Buckeyes, an at-large bid. First trip to the tournament since 1987. Very young team. Three sophomores, a freshman, and a junior. And so far, Tim, Ohio State's certainly not playing so as a young team. They've been able to do some things offensively, but defensively in the last couple of possessions, they just haven't been able to get back after a score. And it's something Las Vegas likes to do, run after every basket. At the line is Anderson Hunt, 67% free throw shooter, 1987 high school player of the year in Detroit. A whistle away from the basketball, and Randy Ayers doesn't like it. The foul is on Chris Gent, number 21, young sophomore out of Sparta, New Jersey. Well, Randy Ayers is trying to remind his team of the fundamental things, particularly blocking out. They're playing a big UNLV team. This is Butler for two. And we're tied at nine. And when you have a 6'10 guy who has that kind of range, it's very difficult to guard him when you don't have anyone who has the same size. UNLV now four for five from the field. Round to Jet. Ohio State tries to push it into Carter. They do, and he cannot get it to go down. Boy, that one went in and came back out. Rebound by Jim. Talk about the tempo, Lenny. Well, right now it's time for Ohio State to settle it down just a bit. Carter has it blocked by Johnson, and they're going to whistle Johnson for the foul. It was time for them to settle it down just a bit unless they can exploit some openings and advantages. Carter does a nice job of getting position and holding it on Larry Johnson. Now, when you look at the UNLV defense, they love to front inside. That's something that Tark preaches. But the other thing that he preaches is you don't have to block out. You have to go get the ball. Well, that may hurt them today because Ohio State's a strong offensive rebounding team. Perry Carter hits the first one. He's been hot over the last four games. Carter scored 94 points, 51 rebounds, while shooting almost 60% over the last four. And he hits the second one. So with 15-52 remaining in the first half, it's Ohio State 11, the running Rebs 9. The Atlantic Coast Conference still unbeaten in the NCAA tournament thus far. How about Northern Iowa, 14th seed? Eldon Miller, the story there, coached here at Ohio State, as a matter of fact. Texas, Travis Mays, 44 points, 23 free throws in that game. That tied a record set by Bob Carney of Bradley. 
And, of course, Loyola and Marymount. Everybody's following that story in Bo Kimball. Here it's 11 and 9, Ohio State. But Johnson closes Four. that gap with a short jumper. And we're now tied at 11. Second tie of the game. And after that particular timeout, I'm sure Jerry Tarkanian told his team, you're going to have to play basketball today. Go to your strength. Oh, how about that? Jim Jackson, the freshman, the Big Ten freshman of the year. Well, that's a freshman who leads them. Jim Jackson, great baseline player. Butler with the turnaround. Rebound goes to Robinson. Move on the transition. And Mark Baker makes it 15 to 11. Hunt shot is short. Biggest Ohio State lead of the game, four. Last touch by UNLV. We want to remind our viewers that some of you will be leaving us in a few minutes to see Clemson and LaSalle in its entirety. You'll be kept up to date on the progress of this game with the scoring reports and the highlights. Time out on the floor, 14.44 remaining. First half, 15 to 11, Buckeyes. It's been a UNLV tempo, but Ohio State is playing well, Lenny. Well, Jim Jackson is a guy who loves to play the baseline, but UNLV, if they're not hitting and leaving wide open lanes to the basket, this tempo is not going to do them any good. Buckeyes are shooting 55%, and they're rebounding well. Brown has five points, Carter has four, and Baker has four, so it's even distribution. This is Brown for three as it goes. Here come the refs. Great job by Ohio State to get back and plug up that break. Hunt can't get a shot to go down. Ohio State doesn't have the numbers. Jackson's shot. Long rebound to Brown. He penetrates and throws up a bad shot. And UNLV has the break. Here we go. Nice move by Hunt, and he's fouled. Anderson, Hunt. Well, just when you want to commend Ohio State for their poise, for being able to come down, change tempos, explore the advantage breaks, they wind up turning it over and not able to get back here. Anderson Hunt with a nice crossover and penetrates. Ohio State's two bad shots really led to this. That's the second foul on Mark Baker, the sophomore guard. And it's the fourth team foul against the Buckeyes. At the line is Anderson Hunt. May look for a little bit of UNLV pressure if Hunt makes it. Cuts the Buckeye lead to one. And Mark Baker with two personals will go out of the ball game, and Alex Davis will come in. Davis, player of the game Thursday night against Providence. 24 points in 27 minutes. And we talked about pressure. UNLV into a zone. Attempting to quicken the pace the same way that they had in the last two possessions. Inside to Carter, and Carter walks. Ohio State's gone to a bigger lineup now, playing both Bill Robinson and Perry Carter, the two big centers. This is Butler's nice pass inside that Jack Scurry never saw. Him. Well, with Moses Curry in the game, he's not nearly the offensive threat as the Larry Johnson. And it's funny why they would go to him right away. He's an emotional player, though. Maybe that's what Tark's looking for here. Davis walks. Turnover number two for the Buckeyes. Well, without Mark Baker in the lineup, twice down, UNLV has gone to the zone. Ohio State really hadn't got a handle on it. And by not getting a handle on it, some turnovers were created. Now what Randy Ayers has to do is settle his team down, keep them focused defensively, as we saw Chris Gent come in, and then have them come back down and try to figure out what's going on on the offensive end. Chris Gent is back in the ball game. Nice shot by Hunt. And UNLV has its first lead. We just saw Ohio State push it up. They're not bashful now. If they have the advantage opportunity, regardless of how big UNLV is, 
they'll take it. But right now, they'll force the work against the zone, something they haven't had success with so far. The winner of this game moves on to the Sweet 16. And Ohio State loses it again. That's their third turnover. Ohio State just doesn't seem comfortable with moving the ball around the perimeter. They'd rather take something off the dribble and get something started. Inside to Scurry. And it was last touch by Ohio State. Baker will come back into the ball game along with Carter. Brown will go out, so will Robinson. This is Hunt, top of the key, 12-19, remaining first half. Scurry, good penetration down the left side, but has a bad shot. Baker pulls it down. 3 one Ohio State. They can't convert. Inside the bucket goes, and the foul will be called on Lee. That's his first. Well, David Butler, not being known as a power player, gets the ball in good shape on the post. This is what Las Vegas University of Nevada, Las Vegas, has to do in order to put more pressure on Ohio State. Ohio State's thin on the front line. You see Larry Johnson's back in the game. Maybe Jerry Tarkanian has found the weak spot in the Ohio State defense. Moses Curry goes back out of the ball game. The running Rebels on a 7 0 run over the last three minutes. A look at Treg Lee. Treg is an unusual first name. He was named after his father's four best friends Tony, Ron, Eddie, and Greg. That's what he said. That must be the trend in the Big Ten. You got Lloyd Martin. <laughs> UNLV by three. 11.41 remaining in the first half. As you look at Randy Ayers, 33 years old, coached under Elvin Miller and Gary Williams at Ohio State. Now he's the man. We had a chance to see that 7-0 run that the Rebels have gone on. The reason they've been able to do it is because Ohio State really has failed to solve the zone. Lee had the shot, then weighed it and got into some trouble. Ohio State now has missed its last five shots. Well, the zone has put a lot of pressure on Ohio State to be able to hit the perimeter shot, something they're not willing to take. Baker will push it, tries to get it to Carter on the alley-oop, and it's just taken away by Anthony. Tough shot by Anthony, but a great follow inside. And Johnson just put it in easily. 11.02 remaining first half. It's a five-point lead by the running Reds. A couple of good matchups coming up for you in the West Region tomorrow. You look at Loyola Marymount, Bo Kimball with 45 points going against Michigan. Steve Fisher 7-0 in postseason. Alabama, Arizona. That's the second round triple header coverage tomorrow beginning at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Michigan had a scare, 7-0, but Steve Fisher had an awful scare. Here it's 20 to 15 UNLV. Under 11 minutes to play first half. Baker scores on the left side and cuts the lead to three. And that was a gift from UNLV because in that zone, Ohio State hasn't been able to score. They've turned it over and missed shots and given UNLV the opportunity to go on a break, the thing that they like to do most. Anthony with a short jumper. Can't get it to go down. Rebound Buckeyes. Turnover number six. That'll drive that man nuts. Well, he knows that his team is a little too anxious right now. They want to get out and run. They certainly don't want to face that zone because they haven't really done a good job. Their perimeter shooters aren't shooting all that well on the season anyway. They're shooting 44%. Alex Davis, Jamal Brown, 42%. UNLV, on the other hand, wants to come down in half court because they know they've had Larry Johnson in there with an advantage if they could get him the ball. Butler tries to get it inside to Johnson, draws his double team, and still makes the shot. Well, I guess they got on the ball. Johnson now four for four from the field. Alex Davis with a jumper, yes. 
Picking up where he left off from Thursday night. Oh, what a shot by Stacy Ogman. Off balance, little dipsy doodle layup. Well, if they haven't learned thus far, they better learn quickly, Ohio State. They can't sit around admiring made baskets. They've got to get back. Pushes the Reds lead back to five. Jet shot is long, and Johnson pulls the rebound. Greg Anthony calling for the ball. That's the leadership. Rebound, Ohio State. Jackson over to Baker. Kicks it out to Davis. He'll fire for three. Back to Davis again. No bucket. It won't count, and the foul will be on Larry Johnson, and that's his second. Now, if UNLV gets into foul trouble, it could present problems for that man, Tark the Shark, because it is not a deep UNLV bench. Well, we talked to Tark the other day, and he mentioned that he's so afraid to put some of the people off the bench in the game because in the past, they have seemingly lost leads. He's worried that he doesn't have the big 6, 10, 7 footer to come off the bench to anchor his defense. Curry and Sianovich come back in for UNLV. Butler gets a break. Johnson gets the rebound. Robinson is back in for Ohio State. Ahead to Curry, and he converts. That's what that man does so well. Jerry Tarkanian says that he has no range whatsoever. But nevertheless, he runs down on every play. She's 52% from the floor. Vegas leads the game for UNLV. This is trademark running Rebel basketball, getting down on transition after made baskets and getting the runners out there and pushing the ball and finding them. Turnover number seven gives the ball back to UNLV. Stacey Altman inside the scurry. The average air ball follows, it's good, he's fouled. Well, you want to call this relentless. We just talked about Moses Scurry not having range, but the way he gets the job done is perseverance. The foul was on Bill Robinson, the seven-foot sophomore, and Scurry will go to the line. Moses Scurry, 6'7", 220-pound senior from Brooklyn, New York. And even with Bill Robinson at seven feet in the game for Ohio State, UNLV just plays so much bigger on both boards. And it's something Ohio State still has to wonder about. Ten-point lead. Sianovich will be called for the foul. That's his first. And it's only the fourth team foul against the Runner Rebels. Now, Ohio State, not only do they have to block out on both boards, particularly their defensive boards, but now they come down in a situation where they need a basket badly, and they've got to execute against this zone. Davis, air ball, Story with the rebound, and Robinson is called for another foul. That's Robinson's second. Early in that ball game. The L3 is not even warmed up yet. That should be a good matchup, though. LaSalle going against the two big duo doom guys, Davis and Campbell for Clemson. Well, it'll be different for LaSalle not having played but one ranked team. But the Clemson team really hasn't impressed people enough during this tournament to really think that they're going to go and run rough shot over LaSalle. Altman goes out of the ball game. And Young comes in. Scurry is at the line. Five points, three rebounds. Now Larry Johnson will get a break. But with this lead, Tark has the luxury of resting his big people, coming off the bench with some smaller guys on the front line, except for David Butler. But more importantly, keep up the defensive pressure in that zone. That's what's gotten him that lead. Baker with a rebound. Baker takes it the distance and scores. And Baker now has eight points. You're going to beat his own, beat him back down. That's the way to do it. Mark Baker's going to be called on to do a lot more of that. Inside the scurry, has it knocked away. And Baker out ahead to Davis. 
Seattle Steelers. Well, we talked about it a few minutes ago. This is what worries Tark. This is why he sees the Blues when it comes to his bench. They just don't keep up the defensive pressure, and they turn the ball over a lot. Sianovic turns it over. And Tark doesn't like that. Well, what's allowing Ohio State to get back into this? All the turnovers by the guys coming off the bench, not handling the ball very well. And Ohio State's doing a great job of beating that zone back before it sets up. That's what they're going to have to do to be successful, because they haven't done a thing against it. Under seven minutes to play, first half. Ohio State now has cut the lead to six. Baker throws it away, and that's eight turnovers now for the Buckeyes. It's almost like Ohio State is playing a man-to-man -man type offense against the zone, and they're turning it over. Robinson with the rebound off Young shot. Ohio State struggling now. Well, Mark Baker's got to assert himself as the leader. Let's see if he can do that now if they don't have the numbers. Baker has Davis on the left side, gets trapped in the air. And Jackson loses it. Still not enough leadership exerted. Pull that ball back out. Hunt's shot is good for two. And Hunt now has eight. And Ohio State needs a timeout. They take one. 5.55 remaining in the first half. 31-23, UNLV. John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. Ohio State has turned the ball over three straight possessions. Called two timeouts to stop UNLV's momentum. And there's Buster Douglas, the heavyweight champion of the world. A little note for you, Ohio State is 2-0 when Buster Douglas is in attendance. Had a look at Larry Johnson, who had aspirations of becoming a boxer. We talked to him yesterday. He doesn't think he can beat Buster Douglas, though. <laughs> he admitted that readily. 541 remaining in the first half. It's 31-23 UNLV. And Tim, I'm sure in that timeout, Randy Ayers had to speak to Mark Baker and tell him that you're key in this particular game. You've got to exert some leadership. When we don't have the numbers, you've got to pull the ball back out. Let's be a little more methodical in our offense. We're turning it over too much in the pattern of the play we're doing now. This is Carter with the follow. Can't get it to drop. And Jackson will get credit for the tip. The ball movement will allow the offensive rebounding because UNLV doesn't block out. But they didn't get it when they run up and down. Now for Skelton. Inside to Johnson. Johnson has it taken away. And Ohio State loses it by stepping on the line. Craig Lee had the steal and just stepped on the line and lost it out of bounds. 31-25, running rubber. Alton has it taken away. Nice pass inside the lead. That's what we mean by being more methodical. Move that zone around. Find some openings. 31-27. It's an 8-2 Ohio State run. Oh, what a shot by Johnson off balance in the paint. He's 5 for 5. Well, Larry Johnson makes it a lot easier on the UNLV guys offensively, but defensively is where they've got to make a stand. Lee had the easy shot, couldn't get it to go down. Inside to Johnson. His first miss of the game. Carter on the baseline, followed by Lee. Balls loose. And a possession error belongs to UNLV. Ohio State on offense is so out of control. One time they'll come down and run a pattern against the zone the way it should be run, moving the ball. 
moving the defenders. Another time they'll come down without an advantage. As we take a look at um, Alex Davis coming in, they'll come down without an advantage and start running health to skelter, losing their focus on what they want to what they want to accomplish offensively. Robinson also comes in, so Baker sits down along with Carter. Carter will get a break, and he needs one. He's been battling the big guys inside, Butler and Johnson. It's 33-27, running Rebels. On the other side of it, UNLV, they've gotten the shots that they've wanted. They just haven't fallen. Ohio State jumped out to an early five-point lead, but UNLV has controlled the pace since then. The Rebels do turn it over here. Well, even though they've controlled the pace, they've been pretty ineffective in the last couple of minutes on the offensive end. Primarily because the shots aren't falling, but they do have the tendency to turn it over when they try to do too much. The winner of this game moves on to the Sweet 16. We'll play next Friday in Oakland against the Ball State Louisville winner. We're in the West region. This is the second round. Inside Ohio State goes. Out to Lee. Davis has the shot. His second air ball, but a great follow inside. Oh, what a follow by Jackson. You just can't emphasize what the ball movement does. It allows the offensive rebounders to get on the board, and it really makes the defenders move a little bit. It gives you some method to your madness. Butler's shot is good for two. Pushes the lead back to six. Seven points for Ohio State. Shot for three is long. Now the pass to Davis. And that's foul. They call a jump ball, but the possession arrow does belong to Ohio State. Good block, good call. Well, what Ohio State wants to do is when they have the advantage, push it. Alex Davis, a little nonchalant with that, didn't see the trailing defender. But you're right, that was a good block, except the follow-through may be the thing that Randy Ayers is screaming about and may be frustrated about. Ayers, in his first year, he was a player, played at Miami of Ohio. Sianovic in the ball game now for UNLV. We'll get an update on that one play. Battle for the boards. And Carter makes it in. Now we mentioned before, Jerry Tarkanian doesn't like to teach blocking out. But I really think it hurts his team against a team like Ohio State that's physical and bangs on the offensive board. They get too good a position. Butler's shot is good. Greg Anthony, who's playing with a fractured jaw, is out of the ball game now. Maybe a little bit shaken up. The doctor did come and talk to him, and he shook his head that he appeared to be okay. But that jaw is wired, and he sat out part of practice yesterday. Well, he was bothered last game. It was one of the few games in his career, high school or college, that he came out with no points. He's also been suffering from migraine headaches. Sianovic with the block. That starts the break. Punt for three. That's their shot. But it just doesn't fall. A whistle away from the basketball, and the foul will be called on Moses Curry. Wow. And that's his first. That's very indicative of the fact that UNLV, although the bigger team, just doesn't block out. Also, it shows that against the zone, Ohio State, when they move the ball and miss, they can get good rebounding position if they put their minds to it and attack the basket. Under a minute to play in the first half. With penetration, the bucket is good, and he's fouled. Well, you can forget that stuff about being a young team and having the jitters and going against the Giants because Ohio State intends to be the Giant killer today. 
The foul was on Moses Scurry. That's his second. So Perry Carter will go to the line. Perry Carter, 6'8", junior from Washington, D.C., played for Gonzaga High School. Great All-American. Played for Dick Myers there in Washington. Majoring in business administration. Brown with the rebound. He'll bring it back and reset. Now you've at least got a block out on the free throw line. I wonder if Tark teaches that or not. Whether he does, very important because now Ohio State may have the last shot of this ball game. 35 seconds remain in the half. They're 32 on the shot clock. There's about a two second differential. Buckeyes will try to melt as much of this as possible. They trail by two. Davis, tough shot, falling away. They're going to call the foul on Robinson, I believe. That'll be his third. So the big seven-foot sophomore has three here in the first half. We well, kind of wonder why the shot was taken with 14 seconds left and I believe 12 seconds on the shot clock. You know, you've got to be able to limit the other team in their possessions, particularly when you have the last shot of the half. But that may be the inexperience showing on the Ohio State side. So Barry Young will go to the line for the running reps, one of the all-time scoring leaders in the state of Maryland. And he hits the first one. Anderson Hunt will go out of the ball game. Augman comes back in. Sianovich will go out. And that answers our question about Greg Anthony. He's back in the ball game. Young bangs in the second one. It's a four-point UNLV lead. Nine seconds remain in the half. Inside the corner, yes. Lenny, when you look at this game, Ohio State has climbed back in, and many people here are thinking upset already. Well, the tempo certainly has been to the advantage of UNLV, but the problem is they haven't been able to convert on the things that they want to, particularly when they try to get the ball inside in the last couple of minutes. They've got a good field goal percentage, but that's not indicative of how they've handled the ball. Take a look now at some of the statistics that took place in the first half. This will give you some indication of how the first half went. Well, the last couple of minutes in the half, UNLV really failed to get the ball inside and do the things that they were capable of doing. Ohio State, on the other hand, is pounding the boards, the UNLV weakness, and that's kept them pretty much in the ball game. Backcourt scoring, Ohio State has gotten some good play out of the backcourt. Jim Jackson still has to get going, the freshman out of the forward position. And Perry Carter left Ohio State with 10 points, Johnson and Butler with 10. So CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Yo, I'm a hot potato MC and the fries. There's a new game. Eight seed trailing the number one seed, running Rebels of UNLV by two points. The winner of this game moves on to the Sweet 16 and will play next Friday in Oakland against the Ball State Louisville winner. Ball State and Louisville, that game coming up after this one. Game two of the West Region here in Salt Lake City. Tim Brand along with Len Elmore ready to begin the second half. The Rush Devils will bring it in dressed in white. Ohio State in red. Tim, look for UNLV to work on their execution. They really didn't do a good job at the end of the half, allowed Ohio State to get points off turnovers. This shot is for three. Baker with the rebound. Brown will kick it back out front, and the Buckeyes will reset. Man-to-man -man defense by the running Rebels. Ohio State wants to push it up if they have the advantage, but just like there, if they don't, they'll bring it back outside, and they'll get set. Good idea by Brown, poor execution. The save is made, and Brown will fire. Can't get it to go down. 39-37 UNLV. This is Butler's shot. 
Great tap by Johnson. Twice can't get it to fall. Fight for the rebound. And Jet has it. I think UNLV is caught off guard. They really didn't believe that Ohio State could be as scrappy as they are, particularly on the offensive board. First trip to the NCAA since 1987 for the Buckeyes. They start three sophomores, one freshman, and a junior. This is Anthony. Great penetration. And the lead is four. Well, you certainly have to regroup defensively. You can't allow somebody to come down the teeth of your defense. Jackson at the baseline. Well, that's the scoring leader on this team. He does so much for them offensively. And as you mentioned, he's got to get started because it gives Ohio State another weapon. He now has six points. And he will be critical down the stretch. Oh, Butler's turn around. Johnson with the follow. Well, Larry Johnson has finally awakened and realized that he's a lot stronger than Chris Jim and can do the job under there. Johnson now has 14 points, Lenny. But he hasn't been hitting the offensive boards as much. Right now, if he's not going to get the ball, he might as well make his presence known by bullying Chris Jim. Anthony will be called with the foul. And Anthony's hurt. Wow. He's playing with a broken jaw. It's wired, and he just hit it again on the floor. Obvious concern from the UNLV bench. Not only does he have two fractures in his jaw, but it's wired so tightly, he's playing with a migraine headache. Yeah, but he doesn't play as though he's got those problems. And we talked about heart, diving for loose balls and things. You make yourself susceptible to those types of injuries. Seattle comes back in, replacing him. This is Jim. Top of the key, nice pass inside the corner. He can't handle it, but Jackson follows. Well, Ohio State will take every break they can get, as long as they capitalize. And Butler walks. And except for Larry Johnson's work on the board, UNLV seems to be caught in the same type of quagmire that they were in at the end of the first half, getting the shots they wanted but not executing. Moses Curry comes back into the ball game. You saw Johnson leave it. Johnson, 12.7 rebounds. He now takes a breather. Anthony is also on the bench. They continue to look at his jaw. Buckeyes with a chance to tie. Jackson has his shot blocked. of Greg Anthony on the offense hurts the execution of UNLV as well. Bad angle for Sianovic. And Brown does a nice job stepping into the passing lanes, but he can't convert. Anderson Hunt's got to meet that ball. Brown rolls the first one in. He now has nine points, two assists. He's only a sophomore from Arlington, Texas, a communications major. And he hits the second one. They continue to work on Greg Anthony. They're hoping he can get in quickly enough because he's the guy who's really adept at running this offense. Although Fionovic is usually called in to calm the offense down when they get out of sync. This is the first tie we've had since it was 11 to 11. Fionovic fires for three, and it's short. Big rebound. Butler with the outlet pass. Hunt in the paint. And Scurry with a foul. Well, that's the position that seems to be the weak point for Ohio State. Gent just not strong enough to keep Scurry or Larry Johnson off the board. Gent's shot is long. Rebound, Ogden. 
Jerry Tarkinian just asked Anthony if he could go. He said yes. But then walked down to the end. You can see him at the top of the screen. He got a Band-Aid on his chin, and he will come back into the ball game. There's timeout on the floor. UNLV by two. This is the menu for the rest of the afternoon. Ball State and Louisville here in Salt Lake City in the West. Don't forget North Carolina, Oklahoma. That's out in the Midwest. Oklahoma may be ready to explode after struggling against Towson State and Michigan State against UC Santa Barbara. Anthony is back in the ball game, has a three-inch cut on his chin. The jaw is wired. Two fractures, one compound, one simple. Those fractures came in the Fresno State game in February. He's still suffering from migraine headaches and now playing with that cut. It looks for Mark Baker, who had a nice first half offensively to try and take advantage, but they're in a zone right now, UNLV, so it'll be difficult to really do anything with that with Rick Anthony. One in red, 5-2. Fight for the rebound, and UNLV pulls it down. Nice pass for Curry, and he can't get it to go down. UNLV back nicely into the zone. The same type of defense that gave Ohio State such problems in the first half. Another turnover. UNLV now 0 for 11 from three-point range. This is Jackson at the other end for the Buckeyes. Baker with the follow. Balls loose. Ohio State. This is Gent. Again, fight for the rebound. Robinson gets it. It's wild in Salt Lake City. Brown throws it away. Turnover number 13. remaining in the ball game here in Salt Lake City. I want to welcome those of you who have been watching Clemson and LaSalle. UNLV with the basketball, and UNLV leads Ohio State 45-43. to We're at the John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. It's the second round of the West Region. Tim Brant and Len Elmore with you. There's our score, 13-54, remaining in the ball game. Well, Tim, it's been a case where Ohio State, the supposedly young team, just won't go away. They're still in the face of UNLV. They've done some nice things defensively, and when they have a chance for a break, they get some good opportunities there, and they convert on them. UNLV has had trouble on the offensive boards with Ohio State, but more recently, this guy right here, Larry Johnson, has been the story in keeping UNLV's hopes alive by pounding those offensive boards. The winner of this game moves on to the Sweet 16 and will play next Friday in Oakland against the Ball State Louisville winner, which is the second game here in Salt Lake City this afternoon. Johnson's second shot rattles in, so it's 46-43 with 13.53 remaining. Ohio State, the number eight seed in this region. UNLV, the number one seed. Many of the so-called prognosticators have picked UNLV to move on to the final four, and they won by 30 in round one. This is Jet. Another big round rebound by Johnson. Well, Jen's been in a shooting slump just about all year. He's not the guy you want to... Oh. Anthony's shot is long, but he is fouled. And the foul will be on Trey Lee. That's his second. Saw the Clemson LaSalle score there. Story for UNLV has been their outstanding player, Larry Johnson. 13 points, 10 rebounds. And it also has to be this guy right here. Not only an injury, but when he's out of the game for UNLV, Jerry Tarkanian gets in that particular position because he's the guy that leads this offense, and what happens is they get out of sync, and they had been at the end of the half, and that's why Ohio State is where they are. 47-43 running rebels. Tremendously courageous performance from Greg Anthony. Nice pass. Carter on 
Altman blocks it down, and Altman will be called for the foul. That's his first. And the third team foul against the running Rebels. Well, it's a nice job by Ohio State in coming down more under control than they were a few moments ago against this zone. And they have to realize, as they did in the first half, whenever they move the ball, force the defenders to move from side to side, they're going to have much more success in getting the ball where they want. Carter rattles it in. You're looking at a guy with 732 rebounds for his career, more than John Havlicek at Ohio State. He has 11.6 rebounds today. And his hobby is fishing, and I'm sure he doesn't want to have to go get the poles for tomorrow. <laughs> Hogman had the shot, passed it up. Uh, nice pass inside, blocked down by Lee. And that'll be turnover number 14 for that man's team, Ohio State. Randy Ayers in his first year, only 33 years old. You can see he's done such a marvelous job in making the Ohio State Buckeyes believe in themselves despite the relatively young class that they have of players. Butler to the baseline has it blocked by Jen. Jen is called for the foul. That's his second. Only the third team foul on the Buckeyes. If you take a look at Chris Gent, he's the guy that UNLV has been pointing for. Only a second personal foul, but more than not, when matched up against Larry Johnson, he's been giving up an awful lot of size and strength, and Johnson's been taking, uh, taking advantage of him. Butler hits the first. He's a 75% free throw shooter. Was the nation's top junior college center as a sophomore. His major is social work. And he hits the second one. You know, I shouldn't be surprised, but I am a bit that UNLV hasn't pressured Ohio State full court. They have been shown a little prone to uh, turn the ball over when pressured. Baker takes it in with the guys, tries to get it to Carter, and Carter loses it out of bounds. You know, they just don't handle the ball cleanly enough, and I really believe that maybe Tark is worried about the altitude. He doesn't want to wear his players down. We're 4,500 feet above sea level, and the air is a little bit thin. Well, it looks to me as if Ohio State played much better against Providence Thursday night than they are today, and yet they still only trail 49-44 to the number one seed. And again, it goes back to the running Rebels. They can't stand prosperity. And Butler is fouled by Carter. The bucket is good. But when they do those types of things, go to their strength, then they're in good shape. And Larry Johnson just cleared everyone out, got Carter on his back. UNLV, when they want to execute, they've got to go to the person that they know is going to finish the play, and that's Larry Johnson. That'll be the second on Carter. You see Randy Ayers. He's inserting Jim Jackson back into the lineup. And Trey Lee will sit down. Johnson at the line with 15 points, 10 rebounds. Jackson comes back into the game primarily for Oppos. Good play by Butler. It opens UNLV's lead to nine. As I was mentioning before the offensive rebound, Jackson's in primarily for offense. Ohio State's now got to put some points on the board. It's a 10 1 run and rebel run right now. Jackson with the foul. Jackson is struggling. Altman. This shot the three is good. Time out on the floor with 11-16 remaining in the game. 53-44 Reds. Salt Lake City, Utah, the West Region. UNLV leads Ohio State 53-44. Some of the other games, Connecticut, with its 29th win of the year, has already moved on. Now we'll go to the Meadowlands, join the Sweet 16, and await the winner of that Clemson-LaSalle game. And here's how that bracket looks.
So UConn moves on with a 74-54 win today over Cal, Lou Campanelli's team. Well, you look at this halftime score at Clemson LaSalle game, and it really bears in mind that Clemson hadn't really played well all the way through the ACC tournament and up to now. And they're really going to be hard put to explain this, having had such a good season. Clemson, of course, the ACC regular season champs. First time they've ever done that. Another Buckeye turnover. Ohio State has missed their last 11 shots. Really struggling now, and they have 16 turnovers. Butler wins. Well, Randy Ayers has tried to pull every lever and push every button. He got Jim Jackson back in the game. He's got the big fella, Bill Robinson, actually, who's leaving now. Perry Carter's coming in. These are the guys that are going to have to carry them if they're going to catch up. But they have to execute offensively. And right now, against this zone, they seem to be totally confused. Funny, we've been talking about Greg Anthony of UNLV and his fractured jaw. Now we get word from the bench that he also has back problems. When he dove for that ball and injured his jaw, he also injured his back. But he's still out there. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's an amazing thing. The guy's got such heart. The Buckeyes need a basket badly. Blocked by Johnson, steps on the line and loses it out of But Mark Baker will think twice before he puts another shot over Johnson. Ohio State is finally moving the ball, but they're doing it laterally from side to side. They can't really explore inside. That's how you beat a zone. Try to make it implode. Beat it from inside out. Ohio State just two for 16 from the field in the second half. This is Jet. Not even close. Rebound, Rebels. This is Altman. Altman is fouled by Baker. Mark Baker at 6 1. Really had an opportunity to block that shot. You talk about some rise. That's his third personal. Baker's had knee problems, too. Earned his way back into the starting lineup just 13 games ago. He was injured prior to that. At the line is Stacy. Oh, pretty good. Oh, Scurry comes back into the game. Excuse me, Lennon. Johnson will get a well-deserved break. If you look at Stacy Ogden with only four points, Ohio State has pretty much taken him out of the ball game because they've set up and they've prevented the transition basket for long stretches of time. But now, they're so confident, UNLV, that they're going to get the rebound or push it up after basket. Ogden is able to leak out and get the points that he wants in the way that he can. Ogden hits them both. The lead is now 11. Under 10 minutes to play. The winner moves on to Oakland. Had it wide open, but that's just not a good pass. You've got to be sure of those passes. The right idea was to go inside and beat it from the inside. Coming up next this afternoon in Salt Lake City, it'll be Ball State against Louisville. Louisville, of course, two championships in the 80s. That shot is short. The foul will be on Mark Baker, and that'll be his fourth. Both teams having trouble shooting in the second half. Not only has the defensive intensity picked up, but particularly for Ohio State, they are playing against a zone that they haven't been able to do anything with. They don't have the perimeter shooters to attack it outside, and they just can't get the ball inside. When they have the opportunity, they throw it away. Jet and Baker go out of the ball game. Lee comes back in along with Alex Davis. At the line is Anthony. Anthony hits the first. He's an interesting story. Political science major, aspirations of one day joining the Senate. Matter of fact, he worked on Capitol Hill last summer for Nevada Congresswoman Barbara Vukinovich. He's chairman of the Nevada Young Republicans and already has his real estate license. <laughs> He sounds like he's turning into a real yuppie. <laughs> Who can play a little ball? He's already a shooter, I can tell you that. 57-44 running rubber. Davis passes up the shot, tries to get it inside to Carter, and Butler knocks it out. It'll be Buckeye basketball. It's a 14-1 run by the Reds over the last seven.
seven and a half minutes. This is three. Can't get it to go down. Butler last to touch it in Ohio State basketball. Randy Eric has got to wonder what could he do to get some luck. He finally gets it in, and Trey Lee's basket rims the basket and goes out. The shot rims the basket. will come back into the ball game. And Butler will go out. Both Larry Johnson and Gibby David Butler are rest. I guarantee you, in the UNLV offense, Larry Johnson's going to be the coup de grace, so to speak. He's going to put Ohio State away. That's what they're looking for, trying to get it inside of that zone. As cold as they've been, they still on the trail by 11. Johnson to Scurry, and the foul by Johnson. Carter walks with the ball. Well, that's turnover number 19, and that'll tell a pretty good tale of how this game is going. 7.49 remaining. Right now, it's all Rebels. <laughs> Connecticut has already advanced in the East, and as you look at the menu yet to come this afternoon, we'll continue to narrow the field. Oklahoma, North Carolina, and the Midwest. Ball State, Louisville here in Salt Lake City. And don't forget Michigan State, the number one seed in the Southeast, one against UC Santa Barbara and Jerry Finn. 740 remaining in the ball game here. The number one seed, running Rebels of UNLV, lead Ohio State 59 to 46. The winner will play the Ball State Louisville winner next week in Oakland. Butler kicks it back out to Anthony. Now Butler fires the shot is short. Baker gets it back for Ohio State. Ohio State just three for 18 from the field in the second half. Went almost nine minutes without a field goal. The difference thus far is that UNLV went on that 14 to one run. Baker is fouled, and the block will be called against Hunt. That's his second. Keep you updated on the Clemson LaSalle game, 45-32. And Connecticut has already advanced with a 20-point win over California. So Ohio State hasn't lost its focus. They've had some bad luck, but they still know to get back into this game and make a run it. They've got to really pound the offensive board as cold as they've been. I'm not really sure they're out of it. They only trail by 11 with six and a half yet to play. But you see it slowly slipping away when you don't shoot well. On the other end, they've got to play some real tough defense. Another turnover. Here comes Jackson of the Buckeyes. Numbers aren't there. Let's see what he does with it. Into the paint. And Lee thought he was fouled, didn't get the cover. He gets the follow here, and he is fouled by Butler. So for Butler, that'll be number three. And the tide is changing. You talk about luck. That time Jackson makes a bad play by going against the grain. Too many defenders inside, but comes up shining when the, the foul is called because Lee went back to the board hard. Craig Lee is a 57% free throw shooter, has a chance here to pull the Buckeyes within 10. Makes the first. Went to St. Joseph's High School in Cleveland. That's where Clark Kellogg went, isn't it? Yeah, Clark Kellogg was a high school All-American there, as was Craig Lee, very highly recruited. Makes them both. 
and the lead is now nine. Robinson comes back into the ball game for Ohio State. And Carter will get a breather. Ohio State's going to pressure throughout the game. That foul is on Brown, and that's his first. They're going to try and pressure throughout the game. They've got to get the ball back, maximize their opportunities. It's a one-on-one -one situation from now on in. And keep in mind, UNLV is an outstanding free-throw shooting team. They shoot 70% from the line as a team. You know, that wasn't always the case. Last year, they shot only 63%. And you combine the talent, the addition of a Larry Johnson, and the fact that they're shooting better from the line, and you'd think that this team would be pretty much unstoppable. Anthony makes the first one. We told you Anthony already has his real estate license. Very active in politics. He also is a communications major. As well, a minor, rather, with his, uh, his politics. Well, we had an opportunity to talk to him last year during the NCAA tournament. He's quite an impressive guy. Very glib. And he's got a twinkle in his eye when he talks about his political aspirations. The lead is 11. Baker's shot is no good, but he is fouled. And the foul is on Anthony, his second. But if you want to be a good politician, you have to utilize great judgment. And right there, Greg Anthony knows it's the wrong thing to do to foul a jump shooter. Carter goes out. Robinson comes back in for the Buckeyes. At the line is Baker. Eight points, eight rebounds. He's a sophomore from Dayton, Ohio. You know, at the top of the show and in talking with our colleague Mike Francesca, you know, we realized that Baker would be the key to a high state's fortune. I would like to see him exert a little more leadership down the stretch here. When his team brings the ball down and makes some bad decisions, he's got to come out and take control and not let them run wild on offense. He misses the second and the lead is 10. Clint Haskins, the Minnesota coach, calls Baker the most improved guard in the country. They'll meet him down the stretch. 5.50 remaining in the ballgame. Johnson on the baseline. That's a hunt. Nice skip pass to Johnson. And he rolls it in. It bears repeating. That's the guy who will deliver the final blow if they decide to get him the ball. He now has 19. Jackson shot the ball. And Brown is fouled. And the reason I say he's going to be the guy to deliver the final blow because there's no one on the Ohio State team that matches up with him as far as strength is concerned. And when he spreads out like that and gets position, it's really hard to stop him. UNLV has just got to look for him. They haven't done that enough while he's been in the game in this half. Lenny, that last foul was called on Larry Johnson. That's his third. At the line is Brown. First one. He's a 73% free throw shooter. Moved to point guard last year when Jay Burson got hurt. Well, he's the most experienced player on the team. This is his 64th straight start. Experienced guard on this team, I should say. Perry Carter being the most experienced player. They keep the lead at 10. Trying to move on to the Sweet 16. on Johnson, and that'll be his fourth. So now things get interesting. 5.05 still remaining in the ballgame. And, and I believe there's a technical, technical, foul. technical foul there is. <laughs> You know, I have to think that some of it is frustration, not only that Ohio State is hanging close, but that his teammates just aren't playing with him. And he's trying his best to get position inside, and a lot of times when a guy like a Bill Robinson who's a little slower hangs on, you know, he's going to get frustrated and do some things he's not, he's not really happy with. Now this can be a big turnaround. 5.05 remaining in the ballgame, the Buckeyes down by 10. This will be two shots. The first. Now they'll shoot the one and one.
and then have possession. It can be a six-point swing. If you didn't know any better, you'd think that UNLV at this point was the young team that didn't have toys. Why not keep Robinson on the line after he had already made two? Well, that's right. It was Jackson who was fouled. I thought Robinson was fouled. They shot the technical first. That's correct. So it's 63-56. UNLV. Come on, fella. I think it would be the other way around. I think they shot the foul. The foul first. And then they take it. Basketball. We're at the John M. Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City. It's the second round of the West Region. UNLV, the number one seed, led at the half 39-37. Ohio State was then outscored 14-1, went extremely cold, but now is trying to climb back in with under five minutes to play. It's 63-56, the running Rebels. And with the help of Larry Johnson, who's got four fouls, and he's not effective defensively, and the technical foul was called on Johnson. Ohio State has gotten to the point now where they believe they can win this ball game, and they're starting to execute the way they should against this zone. This is a 10-4 Ohio State run over the last two minutes. This is the Ohio State basketball. Coming up next out here in the West Region in Salt Lake City, Ball State against Louisville. They'll now advance to play Michigan, Alabama, and Arizona, also out here in the West. Followed by Carter, and he'll be fouled by Butler. For Butler, that's four. So Johnson has four, and Butler has four. Tim, you can't say enough about the toughness exhibited inside by Perry Carter. He recognizes that he can have his way on the offensive board. No one's blocking him out, which is a UNLV trademark. But the problem is, when you have a tenacious offensive rebounder going to the boards, you better start putting your body on him. Alex Davis and Mark Baker go out for Ohio State. Alex at the line with Perry Carter. And he hits it. Perry Carter is the captain of this team. He's the one counted on to provide leadership. We look at a worried Jerry Tarkanian right now, and well, he should be. But Carter is leading by example right now. He averages 15 points a game. Right now, he's exactly at his average. The lead is down to five. And that time again, UNLV, Larry Johnson, great position inside, and his teammates overlooked him. Technical foul on Johnson was big. It's allowed Ohio State to climb back in. Butler with a turnaround, can't get it to go. Followed by Johnson. Great play. You can't get the ball, you don't stop working. You continue to get offensive rebound position. Nice. And UNLV wants a timeout. The lead is five with 3.24 remaining. against the top seed, and they only trail by five. This is the situation. Both clubs have two timeouts remaining. Both clubs are over the limit. They're in the one-on-one -on -one situation, and the possession arrow belongs to the Buckeyes. Foul trouble. Baker four, Robinson four for Ohio State, UNLV. Johnson has four, and Butler has four. The UNLV is right now forced to execute their offense. Carter with a big rebound for Ohio State. And try to get a good shot, something that'll draw a foul or get a bucket. That was not it. Jim inside the Carter and he walks. Carter may be trying to do too much against Johnson. Well, he recognizes Johnson has four fouls. 
But to turn it over in a situation like that, the most experienced guy on the floor for Ohio State, you've got to be under control. Technical foul on Johnson really turned the momentum of this game in favor of Ohio State. 65-60. 240 remaining. The foul. Look at this. Clemson within two now. With 1044 remaining. Davis and Campbell, the big guys, the duo of Doom going against Old Train and LaSalle. Connecticut has already moved ahead in that region and was waiting the winner of that game between Clemson and LaSalle. Here's the foul trouble we talked about. And Tim, just going back to that Clemson LaSalle game, that supposedly is the difference between Clemson this year and last year, the fact that they have a little more character and can come back. Anthony hits the first one. The foul was on Brown. That was only his second. How about Connecticut? Already moving on to the Meadowlands. One of the final Sweet 16. Well, as I said, they have now convinced America that they are the team to be reckoned with in the East. Anthony pushes the running Rebels lead to seven. That's the time remaining in the ball game. UNLV now in a man-to-man -man situation, something they haven't done for a long time. It's dangerous because Johnson has four fouls. Jen inside to Carter and the state back it in. Good job by Chris Jen occupying Larry Johnson outside. Saw the mismatch. Under two minutes to play. UNLV is certainly trying to run some time off this clock. They know they have a hammer in Larry Johnson. They're going to spread the floor and possibly let him work in the pivot. Ohio State was in a similar situation Thursday night against Providence. Came back. Davis hit a three-pointer as time wound down in regulation. Ohio State won it in overtime. Come on, Larry. Get low now. That's what your team needs. Now. Don't shot. That had to be a total shock as Johnson's fouled by Gent. A total shock because UNLV with their size advantage would normally look inside. Under a minute to play. 58 seconds remain and the lead is eight. Under one minute to play, the lead is eight. Ohio State trying to climb back in. The Buckeyes have one timeout remaining. UNLV with two. Both clubs are over the limit. UNLV, the number one seed. Ohio State, number eight. The running Rebels went to the title game in the West last year and lost that. Here's an update on the Clemson-LaSalle game. Clemson now trailing LaSalle by five. And you see the time left in that one. The winner of that Clemson-LaSalle game moves on to play Connecticut in the Meadowlands and East Rutherford, New Jersey. The winner of this game moves on to Oakland and will play the winner of the Ball State Louisville game. Johnson at the line. Larry Johnson now with 22 points, 13 rebounds, and he's two for three at the free throw line. He told us yesterday that he's staying in Las Vegas. He will not go pro. He will come back for his final year of school. And I'm sure that's considering the fact that maybe with the NCAA investigation that nothing happens to UNLV. Ball is loose. Johnson has it. He's out of the hunt. Period and exclamation mark. 33 seconds remain. Oh. Rebound Vegas. And 
and the foul on Carter, and the running Rebels will be heading to Oakland. You better believe UNLV was thinking hard about this game, even though Ohio State was a number eight seed. The running Rebels had been knocked out of the NCAA tournament by Big Ten teams in both 1986 and 1987. Well, the contrast was clear. A disappointed Ohio State, but they've got nothing to hang their heads about. They came in here and battled what may possibly be a Final Four team and took them just about down to the wire, even though they were expected to get blown out because of their youth. remain. Jet for three. Another rebound for Johnson. Back to Jet. His shot is three and Ohio State takes a timeout with ten seconds remaining. Well, get used to seeing the Buckeyes. Only going to get better. The Buckeyes start a freshman, three sophomores, and a junior. 74-65. Right now, let's go to New York. Ten seconds remaining in the ball game, 74-65, and UNLV will just run it out now. That should do it. The number one seed moves on. They will play Friday night. Brand saying so long for Salt Lake City with a final score once again. UNLV 76, Ohio State 65. UNLV moves on. They'll play Friday night against the winner of the Ball State Louisville game. That game coming up next year in the West in Salt Lake City. The Chevrolet players of the game, Larry Johnson for the running Rebels and Perry Carter from Ohio State. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the 1990 NCAA Basketball Championship. All right, so UNLV again back to the Sweet 16. In fact, the first two teams to make the Sweet 16 won seeds, Connecticut in the East, UNLV in the West. Look at Clemson coming back.